Hi, my name is Jill. You are here at Road Culture Rules. We're back to just asking another big question because every journey begins with a decision. Sitting decisions bugging me. Whether that journey is to walk away. Should I stay or should I go? If that journey is to stay. If I go, there will be trouble. And there's three parts of making that decision I want to talk to you about today. And if I stay, it will be double. We're still talking about the big heavy stuff, but in the meantime, we're going to take a deep breath, hold for four, exhale, and we're going to see you on the other side. Should I stay or should I go? So I'm kind of in this thing right now where uh, I'm doing a video, you guys are responding, I'm getting ideas. So we're kind of in a pattern. We will get on to other things, but I've actually had some version of this conversation with four people in the last few weeks. And that's really unusual because I really don't interact with that many people. And the thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, when I say, are you going to make the, making the decision to stay or to go? We usually look at that as a very simple decision, right? Should I go out on a journey? Should I become a nomad? Should I take a trip or should I stay home? Is now the time for me to stay home with my responsibilities and not hit the road? And what I wanted to really talk about with that is that it really isn't about the decision to actually stay or go. There's something underneath that decision, and sometimes what's underneath it is I'm bored and I need a little excitement. Sometimes what's underneath it is a very profound question, and you know how I like to talk about the big stuff, but the real question that underlies these big decisions about should I stay or should I go is really do I want to live or do I want to die? And most of us, you know, don't think about being suicidal all the time. So it's not something I'm talking about, uh, an extreme question. What I'm talking about is, and what I'm hearing other people say to me, and, and this was what happened with me, is that you get to a point where you realize that you have to really look at your life. You have to look at what you've built. You have to look at how you feel. You have to look at your health. You have to look at your relationships. You have to look at your responsibilities. And two things need to happen. We sort of hit that wall, not everybody, but a lot of people, we sort of hit that wall that says, what am I doing? Do I want to keep charging down this path that's killing me? Or am I willing to do what it takes to drastically change my life? Because at some very deep, profound level, I'm making that decision, do I want to live or do I want to die? And of course, we're all going to die. And most of us aren't going to be face to face with that decision as I am describing it to you. But I will tell you at its deepest core, that's kind of what's happening. Are you willing at a spiritual level? It's really, are you willing to do what it takes to save your own life? And, you know, most of us, like I said, we don't think about it in those terms, but what we do find out is then we have health problems. We have a lot of other things that happen that sort of take our life over and it becomes too late. So not everybody, but at some point there's kind of this critical decision that we get to where uh, we're still healthy enough to make a change. We may not know how that change is going to be made, but we're willing to take the leap. And the other two aspects of that same decision are what what about this decision am I in denial about? And what about this decision am I just delaying because I don't want to deal with it? And, uh, and so those, the denial that there's even a decision being asked and the delay because you don't want to deal with it, those are really answering the original question, but they're a way of looking at maybe why you don't want to deal with it or why you're pushing it away. And there's that feeling, I'm sure some of you have had it, where like if something doesn't change, I'm just going to get sucked under and I don't think I'm going to be able to bring myself back up. And, and so one of the biggest things that happens if I talk about that with someone is then outcome all the questions or the responsibilities or the reasons why you can't do that big thing. And 
And someone had put this in the comment, you know, that their father had walked out and they had chosen to stay. And so I want to be really careful with this because the second piece of that is, is it's not about technically leaving. It's really more about that underlying decision. And sometimes what that decision is, is to let go of the resentment about the life that you've created or the responsibility that you are involved in. And I think that's really true, you know, when we're in caretaking mode. Uh, it's true when we're in responsibility mode, maybe at a job we don't like, uh, making decisions and living for others, trying to take care of them. Um, and it isn't necessarily about leaving what you're responsible for as much as that same decision is about letting go of any kind of resentment or anger or hate or resistance to the life that you've created. So I wanted to be clear about that, that going on the road, hitting the road to heal is not the end all be all solution. In fact, it's probably not the solution for most people. I think that it takes a particular set of circumstances to be willing to drop everything and take off. But some of us don't have responsibilities in that way. And you know, the, the reality is, is it's a mobile experience. So there's nothing to say you can't change your mind and go back or if situations occur that you have to change your situation and go back to a more responsible uh, stationary kind of experience. But I'm making this video because I want to simplify this idea down to a very core decision as you're trying to struggle with these great big things. And mo much of the time that the core decision is, do I want to live? And it doesn't mean that even anything has to change. It's just understanding that that's the deeper struggle within the context of a lot of complicated issues like money and people and situational and circumstance. At the very core, often it's your spirit asking you, are you willing to do what it takes so that you can live? And sometimes just by answering that simple question, everything else will fall into place, but not always, there's no guarantees. <laughs> So that's another great big question. Someday we'll get back to something a little bit lighter. But for today, I just wanted to, to break that out for you. So there's making the decision, should I stay or go? There's denying the decision, and then there's delaying the decision. So you can look at where maybe you are within those three things and then understand that usually even further below is a bigger decision, not a physical uh, action that you're taking. And that sometimes by just looking at that deeper question, it will create some resolution or it could be just the other side of that, a willingness to let go of the struggle and just accept you are here because that's really what a journey is, right? It's just about where you are. The door is closing, so we're going to be winding this down. Before we go, I want to say thank you for sharing this time with me. I'd also like to remind you I haven't done a book plug in a while. For those of you who are new and haven't uh, looked below, I have a link to three books that will help you with all of these processes that we talk about. They're really not about what the podcasts are. They're just good workbook question. Uh, they're meant to be printed out and filled out to make changes in your life not to tell you about mine. So with that, we're going to take one more deep breath for the road as I hope you will rise with the sun in your eyes, love in your heart, feet firmly on the ground as we walk on survival road, one step at a time. Live free, die wild, my friend. I will see you next time. And you can see for the but keep it close or you